You fucking asshole, cunt! Ladies and gentlemen, sorry everybody, running a little behind. I want to put on a good show. Always want to put on a good show. We got, we got. But I don't do the work. I don't put in the hard work. <laughs> I let it slide. Vic, we got. Something funny happened this morning. Good morning. Good morning. Good morning, Tim. Douglas, <laughs> DJ. Did it? Did it? Did it? Did it? DJ. Hajunpa. DJ, a duck pal is here today. Yes. I'm back in my studio, not uh, in a hotel, back on terra firma in my garage. And I'm with v DJ Doug Pound behind me, and of course, Vic Berger as well. Good morning. How are you, boys? Hey, everyone. Happy holidays. Mm -hmm. <coughs> holidays? Well, yes, it's the Memorial oh, yeah, Day yeah. weekend coming up. Monday. I begin celebrating. Holiday. Wednesday, and I do not this stop. Is, this is news to, to Doug here. That's offensive. What's what, what is it? More what? <laughs> Memorial. I'm talking boobies. <laughs> <laughs> That's a holiday I can get into. <laughs> Producer Matt, hard at work finding me painter's tape Prescription and everything counts. else keeping the show running. Prescription good morning counts. to you. Good morning, Tim. Good morning, Tim. Come on. And good morning, everybody. That was, that was a bit of hostile energy. <laughs> yeah, too. Not at all. Good morning, Tim. Good morning, what are you, Hal Tim. from I'm 2001? <laughs> cool guy. <laughs> good morning, Tim. I've set your conditions. I've, I've created a protocol so you won't have to do as much work, Tim. Everything is fine. Uh, and with us... In studio, my in studio guest Abby Martin is here from the Empire Files. Massage oh, and direction. And she's been to told bottom. not to speak during today's <laughs> We actually got a note from YouTube. We got a note from YouTube that we were allowed to have her on, but she cannot speak <laughs> on the show. So we'll see how that goes. <laughs> we'll lose our, our YouTube license. I said to Vic this morning, you know what would be a good song for our kick for kicking off the show today? is the song by Emerson, Lake, and Palmer that goes, Welcome, my friends, to the show that never ends. <laughs> Remember this song? Listen to this. Watch this. This kicks. We'll get flagged for this, but who cares? Totally. Welcome back, my friends, to the show that never ends. We're so glad you could attend. Come inside, come inside. Come inside, yeah. <laughs> but I'll tell you what. It, <laughs> it took me so long to find this. Because I go, Vic, what's the name of that song? Welcome, my friends, to the show. He goes, you know, I don't know, what is it? Welcome, Welcome my friend. friend. We don't know. <laughs> I'm looking on the greatest hits of Emerson, Lake, and Palmer. I don't see any evidence of this song. I'm like, what the hell? Am I, did I dream this song? Is it by Yes? <laughs> Guess what the name of this actual song is, folks. Sit down if you're not. Pull over if you're driving. Gray Niner if you're... Yes. If you're I don't want you to run into anybody. <laughs> plow into somebody. The name of this song... And I know this song very well because as a kid, you know, classic rock, it was always on. WZZO in Allentown, Pennsylvania, it was always on. Welcome, my friends, to the show that never ends. The name of the song is, with a K, Carn Evil 9, First Impression, Part 2. <laughs> <laughs> Fuck is Carn, Carn Evil 9, First Impression? Not anything about that shit. What a mess. Uh... 
And when you got three di- when you got three guys trying to come up with the title of a song, it's gonna get <laughs> too many cooks in the kitchen. I think it should be Karn, man. Emerson's like, no, how about uh, first impressions? <laughs> what a mess! Palmer's those guys like, are. <laughs> we'll make it part two though. <laughs> yeah, what a mess! What a mess! Uh, lots of fun in store for the show today. Let's take a zoomer, Matt, just to. Well, so someone can officially welcome me back into the studio, and of course, we are gonna we are gonna allow we're gonna break our agreement with YouTube, and turn on Abby Martin's mic. Turn it on, guys in the back. Turn it on. Can you do a test one too? Hello. Oh boy, here hello, we go. Hello. <laughs> we're fucked now. <laughs> we are Super fucked genius. now. Okay, All right, hang tight, folks. This show's gonna be going truly independent. We believe so. <laughs> Thank you for being here. Thank Thank you for inviting me. You know what's interesting is because of where you're seated, this is a little hard for the audience to get. I can't see you because (laughs) there's a camera on you, but I can see the the this thing here. Right. So it's sort of like yeah, this is awkward for me. It's like I'm Errol Morris (laughs) doing an investigative report with you, interview with you. Is it awkward for you to talk to me and not see me? Yeah, it's a little strange, but what's what are you doing? (laughs) What do I care? Oh, there you go. That's why we have that. There you go. Okay. So you can see the interaction. That's the <laughs> dynamics. <laughs> I, could, okay, I could talk to you like this. Hello. Hello over there. Maybe oh, by the way, that's over. something I think, you know, I was just down in Atlanta shooting a, a TV show because I'm a successful TV actor, a member of SAG, <laughs> SAG-AFTRA. Okay. And, you know, a lot of film, a lot of film guys do this when they talk. They don't, this is not the sign of the devil on set. This is looking at a shot. This is looking... Framing. If we're gonna come in, if the camera's gonna come over here, then we're gonna also cover it this, right, Doug? We're gonna cover it. Are we gonna cover it this way? I wish I was on set more. <laughs> but yeah, that's how they do it. That's how this heard, you've heard about that, right? Yeah. But I've heard about that. I thought they go what, in the seventies. They were this, doing this, right, Tim? Like and then they switched. No, it, they used to do the, you know, this, right. and then it would be this. Now it beca- it's become this. So the camera's coming in. Can we do- actually dolly in? Fred and I, uh, when we were on Moonbase, we used to do this. We'd go like, could the camera do like, <laughs> like, what if the camera swoops down, up, and back? But anyways. Tim, the uh, TikTok directors, they're like this. It's like, it's like a vertical frame. Uh, I bring it up because when, when you're doing these, a lot of these scenes, they don't care about the actor's eyeline when it, as it relates to actually acting with other people. They're always like, put your... Can you, can you look right here? Can you look, look at piece of tape there? Put a little tape there. And that's who, that's me. So if, yeah. if you're talking to me, you have to look here. And it's like, okay, I guess I'll do my job. I guess that's my just why you pay me the big bucks. To pretend. <laughs> Matt, who's on the Zoomer? I gotta calm down. I've got a lot of, a lot of caffeine in me. Got our old friend, Annie Sway. Annie Sway. Oh, you know what, Matt? I'm not in the Zoom. Can you believe that? Forgot. You you've done forgot. Ever. I mean, yeah, you, Annie, you just don't worry about it. Calm down there. It's tech talk. <laughs> <laughs> Bang! Wow. wow, just trying to participate, guys. I apologize. Now, we might have some technical difficulties as I sign on to Zoom. So I can see what's going on. Okay, let's see if this works. All right, Annie, how are you this morning? What can I do for you? Oh, hi, thank you. I wanted to <laughs> throw out there... Um, that if anyone has any tips on tattoo removal, I would love to hear it because I've so like you get okay, rid of so that swastika <laughs> tattoo. Huh? I get it. Yeah, I know. I covered. <laughs> I covered it with this skull. No, so these are all these are all college age mm. mistakes, really. So that is a little you know high art for you, a little Andy Warhol. And then so okay, I've been trying to get rid of this little finger thing that I mm. got when I was a freshman mm. in college, and this. But so I looked up this tattoo removal, that's saline tattoo removal. So instead of lasers burning your skin, it's injections of saline solution. Mm. And so I've done this for six rounds now. So like it scabs up, it's kind of painful. Mm. I've done this for six rounds and I've spent mm. like a thousand dollars. And thank you, Michael Barbaro. And it's not, it's not coming off. You're very it's close not- to getting Barbaro, oh, right? <laughs> 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 Mm. <laughs> no, I, listen. I have no sympathy for you. I don't have. 
I've, I've made the right choice in life. I didn't get any. I knew right away back in my early teens. Now I'm not getting any tattoos. Are you crazy? What the hell would I do that for? What the hell do I care? Are you, are you keeping the Warhol though? The I, Warhol. I mean, what are you? Where are you from? <laughs> yeah, that's a cool one. New Orleans tattoos. That's how they Warhol. Warhol. Why do you, Warhol. Want, Warhol. Why do you want to remove them? By the, the way, Warhol. Warhol. Says it. Okay, I mean, as an actor, a fellow SAG yeah. actor, this and this is just like. Things I have to do like for an audition. It's like right. it takes, yeah. you know, um, Abby has a makeup wear, you know, it takes so long to like cover anything, especially like ink. So I'm just over it. And it's like, mm. I don't want to think of myself at age 20 making stupid mistakes and dropping out of college. Oh. Abby, any tattoos? I do. Okay. I do. No uh, regrets though. No regrets. No regrets. I used to regret getting this ice cream cone on my wrist, but then I thought, Let you know what? It. Fuck it. I'm just gonna. That's okay. Yeah. Looks like a doodle That's you did. It's, just like, oh, it's not a tattoo. I just did this doodle for my daughter the other day, my son. That's what I tell Oh, but so, okay. So I have a question then. How do you feel as someone whose face is tattooed on people's bodies? Me? That, oh, yeah. Yeah, it's that true. you might have been that person. Uh, How does that I'm completely feel? disassociated from it. I don't. People can do whatever they want with my, my image that I, that I put out there publicly. You know? Now, if they've somehow rifled through private photographs that I that are dear to me. I have very, ma I have very many nudes that I will never show anyone, <laughs> but I admire them privately. Okay. <laughs> Annie, maybe you can just I did a I did a really classy sort of playgirl style photo shoot when I was in my 20s, <laughs> just for private use. And they're very, um, they're erotic to me, but I'm also just, I enjoy admiring myself when I was Wait, what, slimmer what and younger. Sense? What makes them, did you say they were sophisticated? What makes them- They were very well shot. They were very well, they were shot by a professional uh, uh, erotic photographer. <laughs> so Russia, if you're out there- um, And he, I have the negatives. I have, I, the, no one has access to these, trust me. Okay. In fact, well, the photographer passed away a few <laughs> years ago under, <laughs> under quite mysterious circumstances. <laughs> was buried with them. <laughs> Oh, sorry, Doug wanted to speak. Oh, what were you saying? How do you know? I saw his mouth move. Bomb. I'm observant. I try to get, I, I think I need some kind of like light when I want to right. try to get a word in edgewise. Uh, I need some kind of like light uh, for Tim. To, yeah, it's true. Like I be, a, well, what if I had a mirror? What if I had a mannequin arm that just goes up in front of you? <laughs> no, but what if we just had a mirror like over Herb here Hancock, that I could, uh, uh, video? I could just put a mirror here and then you could wave it. <laughs> I could admire I'm you. A little like floaty oh. air guy. Yeah. It's just like, yeah, it loves the tongue. I don't know. I had a dumb idea. I don't know. You could just remove the finger. I mean, <laughs> 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 then you would be an actor with a unique. Uh, you can add that to your like your resume, like mm -hmm. unique features. Right. I think that's a fine nine look. Fingers. You're not a uh, harpist mm -hmm. or anything, are you? You're not a. You could be a Jer well, Jerry Garcia. Jerry Garcia yeah. had the that's missing nub. Missing oh, okay. finger. Mm -hmm. right, well, I'm Speaking inspired. of Jerry Garcia, I have to share this with you again, another musical thing that will get us dinged. But as I continue my quest to open my mind up to the, the appreciation of the Grateful Dead and all that stuff, I every once in a while dip back in, and I do not like them. Like over and over again, I find myself rediscovering that thing about me. And it's a beautiful thing to have that self-discovery happen and be reaffirmed by it. But I do always say, like, okay, if, I, if in that world, maybe there's something about actually Jerry Garcia that I do like, and I do like a lot of things about him, his playing and, and his voice. And, you know, that I would lean, if I'm going to give credit to anybody in that group, it would be to him. Not that anyone's, not that that means anything, but. Uh, and so they, they've been putting out these live compilations of, of Jerry Garcia's band. He had his own band, which it's like. Why do you need a band yeah, when you've got your own band? Is this like band? later 90s or is this It's throughout his whole career. Oh, okay. But this, so I saw this new thing that came out. I was like, okay, let me check this out. And, <laughs> and <laughs> this is a cover of one of my personal favorite songs, The Night They Drove Old Dixie Down by the band. I mean, this is a, I was like, oh, cool. I'd like to hear his take on it. Whew. Well, again, pull over, folks, because I don't want anybody getting injured <laughs> when they hear this. Listen to this. Virgil <laughs> Kane is the name, oh. and I said, Don't the Whoa, wake up! <laughs> no, stop, stop, go back and t t t pick it up. Virgil Kane is the name. Can you believe those guys are on Quaaludes? Those are like Quaalude laced heroin needles. All right, I, got, I double sped it. You want to hear that? Yes. 
Did you really? That's yeah. close, oh man. God. That's close wow. to the right tempo. It's better than. Uh, it's nice. It's better than normal. It sounds regular. Yeah. yeah. That's funny. Oh. <laughs> well, that's still double sped. Oh well. That's a good. They should remaster that because that. Listen to. I'll play my my version again. Listen to this guitar lick as it comes in. It's like. <laughs> <laughs> Jesus. Hey, wake up! Jerry! The drum fills are so uh, What are we doing now? <laughs> Jerry, we're doing night, we're doing night, the, we're doing Dixie. Oh, fuck, here we go. <laughs> <laughs> Alright, that's, that's enough of me shitting on the dead for now. Uh, <laughs> He's Who got else his, is out there? He's got his scales so memorized. Well, let's that do this. Yeah. Wasted as he wants, he's still kind of like. <laughs> well, let me you do the take uh, a zoomer. Or? I think we should do the city of the day. Oh, you? okay. I mean, right. We are hold, already hold well tight. Viet, Viet, we'll get back to you. Viet. All right. City of the day. The city of the day. Now this is a tempo. This. <laughs> this cooks. It's got to be upwards of ninety BPM. <laughs> Great MIDI drumming by me. Yeah. City, of City of the Day, ladies and gentlemen, is brought to you by Fart Garfunkel's Second Chance Gas Suite Elite. Get ready to take charge of your burps and farts. Or, sorry, ready to take charge of your burps and farts? With Fart Garfunkel's Second Chance Gas Suite Elite system, you'll get a full range of products that let you control your gas the way you want, when you want. Been dreaming of the sound of silence? Try farts, easy breeze, sphincter loosening ring. <laughs> I didn't read this one, okay? <laughs> Try farts, easy breeze, sphincter loosening ring. Just insert it into your <laughs> just insert it into your anus. Turn it on, and your farts will slip out silently every time you let one rip. Bonus, it will turn your stool into fun tube shapes. Do uh, you have extra stinky flatulence? Try farts mints. <laughs> Try farts fins. These suppository fart mints will make your mouth will make your fart will make your, <laughs> make your foul farts minty fresh. Also available in peach and passion fart. <laughs> in it for the long haul, no problem. Just install farts fart to barp. Fart to barp. <laughs> Just install farts, fart, tabar, anal valve. Yeah, 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 yeah. I know. I'm very happy to be here for this. She time. loves it. And val, uh, this fart, tabar, fart to burp, <laughs> anal valve, and instantly redirect any farts right back up to your mouth. That's right. The fart, ta, burp will turn your farts into burps. Warning, fart, ta, burp, burps will smell extremely foul since they ran through your digestive system twice. Fire hose vomiting may occur. <laughs> so control your farts with Fart Garfunkel's Second Chance Gas Suite Elite, sold exclusively at Jiffy Lube. <laughs> <laughs> now, Abby, the Palestinian... Uh, <laughs> <laughs> mm -hmm. Yes. Let's get into it. No, uh, that is terrific oh, stuff. Oh, wow. Uh, the city of the day... Is in fact oh, yeah, the city. <laughs> Juno, did you know Alaska? Juno, Yay. Alaska. Good job. Ever spent some time up there? I have. Yeah, me too. Yeah, it's a good place. Beautiful, beautiful. beautiful. Place. Uh, you'd love it up there, Doug. <laughs> you been to Juno? So yeah. What do you do up in Juno? Juno, wouldn't you know? Uh, I don't know. It's like a northwestern style little town. It's uh. Uh, I was there in the summer. I so was there for the summer solstice. So it was that whole light all night. Deal. They got cute little shops and vintage stores. Oh, for sure. Mm. Mm. I'm in. I believe cool. they have like a bike path that goes through the whole city. <laughs> like one of those. Uh, oh, it's great. It's I'd nice. love to go. I've never yeah. been to Alaska. Um, weather up there. This is interesting. High of 55. Not too bad. Low of 44. It's beautiful up there right now. Weather's um, hot. Weather's hot. Uh, oh, boy. Well, that was very funny. That was very funny, boys. I'm, I needed a good laugh. I think we all needed a good laugh. Oh, hold on. Let me just retweet the fact that we are live. We had so many... Um, I think we just got to go back to bur burps and farts. Just stick we, with that. We want to get the real laughs, you know? 
I was just laughing classic. about, like, when we were talking about this, I was laughing about just the name Art Garfunkel. Still as funny as hell. The name Garfunkel. Like, like imagine Paul Simon being like, God, this guy's voice is so fucking good. We sound so good together. But Garfunkel's going to be the name of, like, we're going to go Simon and Garfunkel? Well, they, you know they started out as Tom yeah, the Tom and Jerry. <laughs> so they they should have stuck with that. I know. Movie. Imagine if they were, what if Garfunkel was like, well, maybe I should, my name should be first. <laughs> Garfunkel and Oat. Uh, Garf- <laughs> Garfunkel and Oats. Garfunkel and uh, Simon. No, that wouldn't have, that wouldn't have reached the top of the charts, I don't think. They're like, let's lead with Simon. And we'll go to Garfunkel. I wonder if there's an uncle, I wonder if Art Garfunkel is an uncle, so he's Uncle, uncle Art Garfunkel. <laughs> <laughs> I know someone named Uncle Funkel. Oh yeah, whatever happened to is that a that's like a band, right? He was in a band, or he was in a band. He's does his own music, right? He has a. I remember he has a very offensive Twitter profile. It's like a ball sack or something, right? Am well, I he has right an now? album called "Picture of My Dick," mm. and it comes in a black bag. <laughs> boy, oh boy! Anyway. What comes in a black bag? His dick or the album? Oh, the album, right? Oh, back to back to Palestine. Back to. <laughs> <laughs> Well, let's take a caller, Matt, because you had somebody ready to go. And we we had v- Veet, is that my saying it right? Who did want to yeah, ask about this topic? That's right. Veet, what's up? Hi, guys, um, and hi, Abby. It's so nice to be on. Um, um, it's actually pronounced fight, like the English word fight. But nice. that's not... Where are you calling like from? Fight? No one talks I'm about from, fight. from Germany, um, Bavaria, to be precise. Cool. Where? Bavaria. Ooh, Bavaria, yeah. The Black Forest. Um, this is the roots of the Nazis is in the Black <laughs> Forest. This is where Vie- uh, Bavaria is where Hitler began his, uh, his uh, political career. Correct? <laughs> yeah, that, that's, that's correct as far as I'm concerned. The, as po- as the Beer Hall yeah. Pusch. The beer hall, but the, where was the Beer Hall Pooch? Was that, that in? That was in Munich. It's in mm. Munich, yeah. Yeah, you have to be very yeah. careful, though. Very careful how you speak of Munich, you know. Very dangerous. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> so, Fight is uh, regretting calling in. Yeah, I know. <laughs> now, sir, please, yeah. please, elucidate. Uh, you have a question for me or Abby? Yeah, first, I wanted to give some, some appreciation to you guys. I've been listening and watching your show for a couple of weeks, a uh, couple of months now. And I'm really, really enjoying it, uh, especially also big stuff. Um, oh, yeah. Let's, uh, let's just thanks. let's spread it out. Don't, Don't worry about the specialties. Just stick with the overall. Yeah, I know. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> How do you think that makes me and Doug feel? <laughs> yeah, with the specialties. And good even you, especially hey, that's, uh, good. that's what, you know why? It's because your that. name is Burger. That's right. Let's, yeah. Do you know any burgers? Yeah. Burger. Do you know any Victor Burger the first? Or I don't know any Victor Burgers. I know uh, some other burgers actually. That's like ham, not cheese. Hello, my name name is Cheese a Burger. <laughs> <laughs> Hello, my name is Turkey Burger. <laughs> that's not funny. That's mean. It's my family name here. <laughs> All right. So yes, thank you for the compliments. Yeah. The entire yeah, audience yeah. agrees with you. And I've, I've got one question for Abby, actually. Um, I've, I've seen the, the interviews with some of um, some, um, some civilians, some regular on the street people in, in Israel. And I've got the feeling like, um, as we always should when it comes to stuff like that, and um, if you like hear people talk from whatever country, uh, we always should be aware that there is always an opposition. And, just as much as the, and there's also an opposition to Netanyahu and some of it even from the right, but some of it from the left. Um, so we shouldn't, uh, I just think um, we shouldn't in generally judge all the people on the basis of these interviews. My question to Fair you enough. therefore would be, um, what do you think we should make of, of these voices and um, and what was your intention and behind behind showing the people? Is it about the general political environment in in Israel, or what? I just wanted to know what kind of point. Um, okay, we got uh, it. I think yeah. we're, we're trying to make, yeah, and yeah, what yeah, should yeah. be the lessons we take from that. Very good. Thank well, so Abby, very I, good. I'll let you answer that however you see fit. I will not editorialize or or uh, intervene. 
Very, very good. Um, well, I think that Israeli society in general is sanitized from Americans. We don't really hear what Israelis think or how they feel about the situation. Um, you know, it's kind of a similar mentality to the U.S. I mean, we are a country that is deeply racist, right? Racism is baked in to American society, and we can see that reflected in institutions like the justice system, like mm -hmm. the police. And this is because of the remnant of slavery, and colonialism and the genocide of native people in this country, but that is hundreds of years ago. Um, Israel is actively colonizing the indigenous population today. So just imagine, you know, that racism is very palpable. Um, it's deeply held and felt in the society. And it would be similar to like, you know, Netanyahu is very similar to Trump and they had a very strong partnership, which I think revealed a lot and exposed a lot of the nature of Israel. But imagine if Trump won in this country like he did, and instead of there being a quarter of the population who came out as kind of crazy Trump supporters, it was like 80% of the population felt like they could really be open about their racism. Mm. That's how marginalized the left opposition is. Um, of course, there's leftists there, and of course, there's people who oppose what's going on. I just don't think there is a lot of them, and that is a scary thing because we're just seeing... Netanyahu really does represent, I think, the mainstream current in Israeli society. And in fact, his poll numbers just shot through the roof wow. when the latest bombing campaign happened. But wow. um, my intent was just to do man on the streets. I do that everywhere I go. I try to just get a snapshot of where people's minds are at. And I was pretty alarmed at the kind of genocidal... You were probably uh, looking for more of a broader yeah, of course. spectrum of opinions. Of course, I didn't cherry pick anything. And I had just gone from the West Bank, living there for a month and interviewing hundreds of Palestinians and stuff like that. And so I was I was pretty shocked, you know, at this kind of genocidal bloodlust that people were open to embrace on camera to an American documentarian. Because, you know, in my mind, if you're that open about that, what what kind of things goes on behind closed doors. So you, it would be hard to find people within three hours, even in the deep South, you know, saying things like that on camera, knowing that they're, you know, speaking to an American audience. Um, so that, it, I think that that does mean a lot. You know, I think that does really symbolize and represent something that we should accept about so where you find society's at. So while you, you would say, you would admit that those interviews are anecdotal because mm -hmm, you're obviously not doing a scientific poll or right. anything, but they do seem to line up with actual uh, uh, surveys and polls. Of in course. The yeah, polls, about 95% right. of Israeli Jewish citizens agreed with the onslaught in Gaza, 85% uh, agree with the shoot to kill policy at the border fence. Right. So, you know, this this is represented and in, in just in terms of Netanyahu's polling numbers. Can um, I, let me just get into high. this. And by the way, folks, we're going to talk about this for a little bit. I don't want to kind of get, uh, we don't want to talk about the whole show. Mm -hmm, We've got some other mm -hmm. things to talk about. I do want to talk about it for a little bit. <laughs> Very important things. We have very important guests. <laughs> uh, and there is peace in the Middle East at the moment, so it's not as pressing an issue. Sorry to drag his ball down. No, I, blame I do him. want to talk about this. I just I want to let him. the audience know that we are sticking to a bit of a schedule today. But who knows? If this turns into a fascinating, elucidating debate, Doug goes to, to sleep back there, and we all learn something. I am absolutely. I'm sorry. <laughs> I'm sorry. I took an easy, cheap target. I'm trying to do a better. I'm trying to be better. Oh. I'm trying to get laughs, but I'm also trying to do better. Cancel me can, if you can want. Can I ask a Cancel question? Me. Like, but I want to ask a question. Oh, okay. <laughs> Let me start off with what I think is a very dumb, or maybe a simple-minded um, question that I always have and I haven't really seen a good answer for. I'm a fucking bona fide moron. <laughs> <laughs> so you have when you I'm t let's talk geography. Mm -hmm. You have you have the uh, the the state of Israel, the country of Israel, and you have. It's a nice. It's a little chunk mm -hmm. of, of land on the coast of the uh, deads of the uh, yeah Medi the Mediterranean. Yeah, Mediterranean. And then you've got this little strip of Gaza. Yeah. Okay. And then there's then there's the West Bank over here. Yeah. So Israel itself kind of runs into this. So I always look at that. I go, well, what does a two state solution look like when yeah. there these two things are not actually geographically connected? Really a great point. And then you have Jerusalem over here, which is supposed to be the shared And, and city. Jerusalem geographically is not, is in the West Bank? Is connected to the West Bank? Is it completely No, it's area? inside. Yeah, no, it's, it's... It's in the middle of, of the yeah. state of, of Israel. Okay, so what is, so what, does anybody have a vision for what that looks like that seems reasonable to you? Or um, even unreasonable to well, you? Well, you know, the two-state, one-state thing is, I, th I think that Palestinians have 
put forward that they are willing to negotiate whatever that looks like because they've talked about withdrawing settlements out of that West Bank area to the 1967 borders. And there's there's a lot of debate about what that state would look like. But I agree with you, Tim. It, it seems impossible when you look geographically at where the land has been taken over because the West Bank has been taken over by settlements. And so you would literally have to go from like crossing <clears throat> checkpoints and settlements to get from one place to the other. Right. But I think there's some things that are non-negotiable, which is equality and democracy and human rights. And like... Right. The two state, one state thing could be, you know, that's up to the Palestinians ultimately. But geographically, it doesn't make sense to me, especially having been in the West Bank and seen how atomized like the land has become because of Israel's just, you know, flagrant violations of international law. And then I thought, well, can't they just can't it just be a one one state mm-hmm. uh, and it's right. a it's a it's they're, they're just treated like regular citizens. And there you go. They have property rights and they have voting rights, and they have mm-hmm. all these things that you'd expect to have as a me- functioning member of a society. Exactly. That, so that's, that's what that I would feel be the like real dream. Happen. That's the dream. And is there a movement in, in, in Jewish-Israeli, however you want, the Israeli politics? I, I remember seeing that there was an effort to include Palestinian Arabs <clears throat> in the government. Mm-hmm. Uh, and some, there was some move towards that, and then that got kind of killed by Netanyahu or or through this this latest little mini war. Yeah, so, so there are Pal- there are Palestinian uh, there are Palestinian Israeli citizens that live within Israel and there are some kind of token seats in the Knesset where Arabs hold seats. Uh, but that is, you know, looking at the broad view of things, there are 5 million Palestinians that are denied like basic human rights because you have 3 million people in the West Bank that are living under a brutal military occupation and then 2 million people in Gaza that are just warehoused in this open air prison. So yeah, I mean, the one state would be lifting apartheid, lifting the military occupation and lifting the siege and giving granting everyone equality and human rights, but that would fly in the face of what Zionism is. So there, of course, I think there are Israelis who are anti-Zionist, but it's hard. Like I said, like imagine living in America where 80 percent of people are like Trump supporters. It's a it's a hard society to live and actually oppose what's going on because the mainstream current is so against you. So a lot of people flee. I know a lot of anti-Zionist Israelis who have fled and they are working from outside to try to build that pressure. And that's why people say BDS, because. It, there's not enough people within Israel to to rein back that kind of fascistic uh, right. current. But um, but yeah, I mean, to 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 say that there should be one state and equal rights means that you would actually oppose the fundamental premise of what Zionism is, which is an artificial Jewish majority based on ethnic cleansing. And it's also a uh, religious. It is a uh, divine. Uh, creed is a divine uh, command that th- that this is our land based upon the Ancient concept of biblical a, text, a, yes. in, which which I think most of our reasonable listeners might say seems a little strange. It it is a so, strange thing. Yeah. So, but how do we separate um, anti-Zionism or mm-hmm. or sort of feeling like this is part of the problem? Why there's this conflict mm-hmm. is the is the hardcore Zionism with anti-Semitism? Because now there's this pushback saying, of course. "I don't think anybody in my audience, myself included, I don't know about Vic. I know he's into some weird shit, but <laughs> <laughs> we have no issues with the Jewish people and the ability to f- to worship freely and practice your culture and practice <clears throat> your religion. So how do we separate those two things and you know do that?" without in- encouraging more trouble. <clears throat> of course. And, you know, just to bring it back to someone who is Israeli, his grandfather, or I'm sorry, my friend Miko Peled. He is a uh, anti-Zionist Israeli who I just interviewed for Empire Files. People can check it out on our channel, um, on our podcast, mm-hmm. actually. But he is a very prominent figure in Israeli society. His grandfather was actually one of the founders of Israel. Mm-hmm. He's on the Declaration of Independence for Israel. He is very... Um, he, his niece was killed in a suicide bombing, but instead mm-hmm. of that driving his hatred toward Palestinians, it drove him to actually understand the Palestinian plight and want right. to fight for peace. Anyway, what he said about, about anti-Semitism, I think, is really on point. He said anti-Semitism belongs in the same category as Zionism, as white supremacism, because mm-hmm. all of those ideologies are based on actual 
hatred and oppression, oppression of a marginalized of group. Right. And he said that it's they're all bad. Right. Um, of course, anti-Semitism needs to be condemned. But I think if there's a rise of anti-Semitism, it's due to the rise in right wing extremism. Right. You know, I mean, Trumpism is Blowback. on the on the rise. We saw Charlottesville and we see, you know, I don't know if you guys saw that video of that settler who was just taking over the home. And he was just like, yeah. if I don't do it, someone else yes. will. Yes. That guy is a crazy fucking Trump supporter. Someone found his Facebook page. He has like stamps of Trump, like Trump stamps on his forehead. Like, Jesus. Uh, yeah, he is. He's insane. So let's also. And he's getting paid to go and occupy people's right. homes and kick them out. He is literally getting paid. Right. So there's to do there's that. a there's an actual there's a financial incentive for a lot of this behavior yeah. from coming from the government. Yes. They're pushing people into these areas, yeah. pushing people out. Mm -hmm. This is not. So this is design. In some ways, this is design. Now we also c should admit, can admit. That there is plenty of people in that region that don't that are truly anti-Semitic do want to see, is you know Israel uh, dismantled or the oh the, yeah you know, the, the anti-Semitism is a very real problem and that exists within you know uh, Islamic uh, states around their region so there is there is hostility there that's real yeah that is based in perhaps <laughs> not only just ideology but the fact that these people came in and threw a bunch of people out. Yeah, exactly. I mean, I, I think it's more about settler colonialism. This is something that's widely understood as wrong. You know, mm -hmm. looking back at, and reflecting at how the U.S. was founded in a similar way, people can understand that that was wrong. Right. But it's just bizarre to just look at a country that's openly... It's happening in real time. Yeah, so happening in real time, day to day, and that, you know, it, they, it's, it's a weaponized concept, and this is something that Miko said as well. They weaponize a very real and growing threat, which is anti-Semitism, and use it to deflect criticism of a state committing war crimes. And that is something that is that's offensive to people like us. I mean, we're progressives, we're liberals, and I am very offended to be called a racist and a bigot for right. simply opposing, you know, yeah, there's no ethnic nuance. cleansing. There's zero nuance at all. And you look at something like East Jerusalem right now, which is where that settler was like, if I don't take this house, someone else will. I need to take it over. Um, that there's something called a demographic law in place that requires 70% Jewish population. 30% Arab population to be maintained. And just wrap your mind around what that means. <laughs> right. It means it's that you just, need yeah. to continue to expel people in order to have this artificial religious right. majority of, of Jewish citizens. So it's it's a fascinating thing that they've been able to weaponize and deflect criticism um, and make progressives scared. And it's it shouldn't be controversial to oppose what's happening. Is it controversial or <clears throat> incorrect to consider Israel a theocracy? Because they, they do have parliamentary, they mm -hmm. do have a government that's based on sort of democrat, democratic, you know, like a like our country or England or something, right? I mean, well, they're, that's they're a, good a little point. different, but they are also bound by religious yeah. law. Like a lot, that informs a lot of their policy and a lot of their choices. By, so. Yeah, there's a fight between the secular and orthodox uh, Jewish community there, definitely a, a huge pull, a uh, push and pull from those communities there. A lot of people want you know, the more secular governance and a lot of people want the more religious, religious institution. Um, but yeah, I mean, Netanyahu is, is pretty crazy dude. Is the set, is the, is the, uh, secular sect of the Israeli, you know, pol political establishment, are they also sort of, you know, nationalistic in their, Oh my God. So, yeah. So they, they're more just about uh, but they must need to connect it to a religious Of uh, course. The divine narrative. right is... Uh, everything is predicated on this divine right that grants citizenship to Jewish people. Anyone around the world can go and move to Israel and be granted citizenship, which means purging indigenous people. But yeah, I mean, it's all predicated on that, but, but there is a secular push because they don't like... A lot of them don't really like the Orthodox uh, people. Um, but yeah, I mean, I think that they're more open about the conquest aspect of it. And when we, you know, we hear all the time, like Israel's the only democracy in the Middle East. I heard that my entire childhood mm -hmm. and it needs to be protected at all costs. But what kind of democracy subjugates and denies 5 million people democratic rights? I right. mean, it would be like the Jim Crow South, like, like telling black people in the height of Jim Crow saying, just coexist. Why can't you just coexist with the whites? Right. You know, it's like, no, you need to remove that institutional systemic racism. And then we can talk about how can we coexist together? All right. Let's, Talk to first. Let's see if any Zoomers have any questions about this for Andy. <laughs> I want to. I want to give some time to them for this. Let's I'm get sure some Zoomers on board, ready baby. To 
ready to engage in one way or another. If they don't, that's fine too. So, so. Looks like Micah Stone has something <clears throat> on this topic. Hey. Hi, Micah. Can you hear me? Yes, hi, Micah. Hi. Very interesting stuff, and um, I don't know. Uh, I'm not used to being on camera here, so I might <laughs> start to out. But uh, not great, I did it. Uh, good so far, man. Thank you, guys. Wichita represent, by the way. Wichita. Kansas. Anyway, is this uh, a racist symbol? <laughs> yeah, it's white say. power. No, like, it looked like a W. Kansas, one time. I don't know. I'm just trying to speak up that there's good people here. Anyway, whatever. Uh, I did an Israeli gal, and she was saying how when I brought up like my issues with the politics of what's going on, she is like, all these people hate me. Mm -hmm. You know, like it was like, I, uh, I am not hating. They're hating me. I have to fight for my place. Mm -hmm. Like that's the mentality mm -hmm. of the, the people that, down there, how they feel persecuted against. And so it's kind of like, I was saying in the chat how I think forced military service has something to do with it. hundred percent. Where they can be propagandized and radicalized right away. Yeah. I don't know. I, I, I am no expert. I'm from Wichita, so I'm a dumbass. No, no, that, that's a really good point. Mika? Micah. 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 I'm so sorry. Um, that's like an extremely good this point. Is a, this is an answer for Micah. <laughs> Micah. Micah. That's a very good point, Micah. Uh, because, yeah, I mean, imagine, okay, as as, like as much as you, uh, uh, U.S. citizens worship the military and militarism is so embedded. Not Ted Cruz. He's very, he's, he's, he's very horny for the, for the Russian military the at Ruskies. the moment. The um, no, as much as as much as we're a hyper militarized country and we externalize all this violence with our government, imagine if we all had compulsory military service. Imagine how like heightened mm -hmm. that would yeah. be. And yeah, I mean, from cradle to the IDF, Israeli citizens are told from birth, and there's forced segregation. You know, there's segregated schools. There's they don't go into these territories and actually talk to Palestinians, yeah. and they're and they are told from birth that these people hate you and want to kill you, and that's why you need this hyper-militarized security apparatus, and that's why you need to do these seems things. So that's, you know, it's seems so like untenable. It's so... I guess we're seeing, <laughs> we're seeing like a, a very want, dumb idea yeah. cra cra you know, cr cracking at the, at the foundation right now. I mean, well, especially because, it, especially because for 73 or for 50 years or so, Israel was able to kind of paint itself as a victim, right? Mm -hmm. a, a people who were resisting, right. you know, potential death and destruction from their neighbors, that, that narrative stuck. But I think for the last 20 years, we've been seeing that that narrative doesn't work when Israel continues to invade and bomb Lebanon, Syria, and openly right. colonizing uh, Palestine and just bombing, you know, a, a besieged territory with no air force, no <clears throat> Navy, and no army with the most high grade military, sophisticated military weaponry. And they just continue to bombard this community as well as continue this brutal military occupation, which really... People hear military occupation, they think of like, oh, it's just there's a base and Israeli soldiers milling around. No, it's like the height of the U.S. occupation of Iraq. That's what the West Bank is like on a day to day. Basis. Well, if you want to see a good snapshot of that, your film, uh, is it Fight for Gaza? Gaza Fights for Ga Freedom. Thank you, Tim. Gaza Fights for Freedom on YouTube uh, is a sh shocking and upsetting Thank you uh, for your work. documentary. Thank you. Uh, and you see what conditions now. The conditions like when you see, I, I saw your thing, and, and you, you lo it looks like this post-apocalyptic yeah. world in in parts of Gaza. You see other parts of Gaza, and mm -hmm. and cars are driving by, yeah. people are going to the market and stuff. So, are there regions within Gaza that are just that are where where no development is happening, and then there are more uh, uh, secure play, or I don't know, you know what I mean? No, like, yeah, it's a little totally. hard to uh, no, yeah, totally. to wrap my head around what it's like on a yeah, macro no, level. and that's. Uh, there is uh, there's just neighborhoods that are completely bombed out and, right. and people live in literal rubble. And that's the thing is this last bombing onslaught, 70,000 people are now homeless. Well, they gave him a warning <laughs> to get out. I mean, that's pretty cool. Yeah. You know, you got to admit. That's pretty humane. It's pretty cool. Pretty so, humane. Yeah. Um, yeah, but no. And the problem now is that they're being collectively punished. So you have people in the West Bank, thousands of people being rounded up, put thrown in jail. Um, people within Israeli society, actual Israeli citizens are being rounded up, thrown in jail because of protesting. And then in Gaza, they're not allowed fuel right now, so they can't run the generators or have electricity, and they're not allowed building materials, so they can't rebuild right now. So they're being punished for what just happened, and we don't know how long that's going to be prevented. Okay, end. one more question from me. Yeah. Um, and then we'll <clears> move <throat> on because we have a very special guest calling in, right, Matt? Great. 
I believe so. Is it so. Netanyahu? <laughs> Hasn't arrived yet. Okay. Uh, what are what are what don't we understand when we say Hamas? What is mm. first of all? What's your position on Hamas? And they are they are being used as a as the I mean there there's they are they are who they are. The chickpea mm-hmm. dip. No, not not hummus. <laughs> not hummus, you wise guy. Hamas. What don't we understand about that? And they are they are a being doing probably things you disagree with, mm. but they are also being used as a scapegoat and an answer for why everything is so fucked up. So what don't we understand about Hamas, and what can we do about Hamas? What can we do about Hamas? Okay. <laughs> what can we do about these guys? Well, well uh, quickly, Hamas is the government of Gaza. They're painted as a terrorist organization from Western powers, and this scapegoat. Uh, is used to continue this bombardment and siege of Gaza and deny 2 million people water, electricity, and basic human mobility. Now, I just want to pose to your audience, imagine if Russia invaded the U.S. and expelled millions of people to the Las Vegas desert and put us all into an open-air prison where we weren't able to leave, we didn't have water, and we didn't have electricity, and we lived among rubble because they continued to bomb us every couple of years into oblivion. What do you think Americans would do? Do you think that this we standard back, ground baby? fucking nation that right. is gun obsessed would just sit well, there and take it? Well, if the casinos were open and the uh, <laughs> Carl's Juniors were open, I think they'd be just fine. But no, yes, we would fight back. We would use whatever means necessary to to poke him in the eye. Yeah. So agree or disagree with Hamas? I think they use the only leverage that they can, which is the rockets, and a lot of these rockets are refurbished. Israeli military right, they're bombs. just sending them back. They send them back. And, um, you know, they I think that another sender. another really important point to understand about Hamas is that this Great March of Return, which is what Gaza Fights for Freedom depicted, is what happens when Palestinians peacefully resist within Gaza. Right. 10,000 people... Slaughtered. They were slaughtered. I mean, people say, where's the nonviolent resistance? Where's the Palestinian Gandhi? Yep. Well, there were 10,000 people who went to this fence. Right. And they were mowed down by Israeli snipers, right. actual and cold blood, gunned down, where every five minutes the shot would go off and another person would fall dead, and they posed no threat. And so that's that's what we need to take really to heart here, is it doesn't really matter what they do. Right. Um, but of is, course is Hamas making disagree. a tactical error in the way that they're handling? Like, do you find that it's a... St- I never understand the difference between strategy and tactics, but let's say, is it like... I don't know. I mean, there there was a ceasefire. Maybe there's yeah. some kind of strategy in the way that they're doing that's just sort of like, we're not just going to be completely mowed down. It's going to be a pain in your ass on an international level. It's going to be, you know, like there's that argument that we're going to be uh, a, th- a threat to you and, you know, like you have to sit down and, dis- and negotiate with us. I mean, but yeah, I mean, they, they, they feel like that's the only leverage that they have are the rockets, and it does work in terms of like you said this is an unsustainable situation israel cannot just continue to target and bomb civilian infrastructure water treatment plants sewage treatment plants apartment towers media buildings refugee camps and hospitals like they just did because international opinion matters and really american opinion matters and this is going through a seismic shift right now so i think what Hamas's capabilities, they are in increasing in terms of yeah. their strategic capabilities, and they did hit uh, a lot of in- infrastructure in Israel, and this and a lot of things did breach the Iron Dome for the first time in a long time. Um, and not, 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 Netanyahu, Netanyahu must love it to he have a, a real big he bad guy over there. Him. It's a great, easy thing to talk about, right? easy target, he loves it. easy bad guy. All right. But that I but want this. I want him to weigh in on this. He's yeah. here in the chat. I'm so excited. <laughs> I am actually a big fan, uh, and he's with us. The um, what is wrong with you, dude? One of the great, <laughs> one of the great singers, artists from the classic rock generation. Uh, he's gotten into a little hot water, a little controversy right now. We have Van Morrison with us. Van Morrison calling in from Ireland. Is that Timothy? Van. Van it's the Man the is with us. Uh, from Ulster, it's, no, it's Northern Ireland. Thanks for getting it right. Yeah, so, well, that's interesting. <laughs> that's interesting, Van. You are uh, from an area that's almost, in a lot of ways, similar to the Palestinian-Israeli conflict. Yeah. Do you, have any, you want to jump in? I know you're yeah, probably sure. listening. In. Yeah, if you want, if you're Banksy, it's very similar. It's just a lot of people going to walls and painting, why, why does it have to? <laughs> 
if, okay. if your logic, if your reference is Banksy, Timothy, sure. What I believe is always the same as what I've believed in Palestine and Israel, the uh, you know, Ireland and Ireland. What I say is this. If there's a lockdown, it's got to be lifted. And if people are being forced to wear masks, it's time. In the words, in the words of one of my classic hits, it's a marvelous night to run on unmasking. Uh-huh. Uh-huh. <laughs> is, is that... Can you place a slide whistle now? <laughs> What's with the slide whistle, Van? It's, you seem to be uh, undercutting your serious message here. Well, with the I work. Well, what's why? Why you work in you work in floral print shirts? Why was that? Is that one of your? Is that one of the the sketches you do? No, it's su- it's summertime, I, Van. Here we're starting kicking off summer here. I'm working with I'm working with uh, Celtic uh, ancestral instruments like the slide. <laughs> <laughs> See the tin whistle. <laughs> yeah. So so, Van, you're in the news a lot because it's you just... a marvelous night for a mask. <laughs> <laughs> it's a marvelous <laughs> night for a what now? A mask? A mask. Tim, it's very important when people when people are forced to wear masks in yeah. the entertainment industry. You can't hear the lyrics. It's ah. impossible to hear the brilliant lyrics such as "If I venture to the slipstream." Say that again. You. It's. I I put the wrong end of the slide. <laughs> Who among us hasn't put the wrong end of the slide? This <laughs> minute. <laughs> <laughs> if I venture into the slipstream between the and Badex and Badex, sir, oh, take it off. Oh yes, thank you, Van. So what are, you you've been you you've been fairly yes, thank you. Can you put that down? <laughs> Go, you know, wait for the chieftains to get there before you mess around with that. Uh, the chieftains, the chieftains are banned from my compound on site. Oh, is that right? What if happened any with you them, and the chieftains? If any of them come, if any of them comes waste, waste kicking over the property line, there are drones that intercept them like that. Now you, it's almost like I'm talking. You know what it cost me? You what know what it cost me? It cost me all the tea in China. Okay. Um, so you all been- the tea in China. Van, you've not you've not been a very very Please. political artist. Please, uh, Timothy, use the formal. I'm the name's Tanya. The name's Vaniel. Van- Vaniel Mars. <laughs> Van Van. Oh, it's Vaniel. Vaniel. Vaniel Mars. Yes. <laughs> I think someone would just be born Van. Come on, it's Vaniel. Vaniel. Okay. Vaniel. Um, I pronounce your name properly with two e's and an accent at the end. Timothy. <laughs> like Timothy Chamelet. Um, it would be a good lyric he's on the list okay so you've been pretty apolitical your whole career now suddenly this past year you've decided to take a stand against these uh this covid lockdown and and the idea of wearing a mask and shutting down venues and stuff how where, where did that d- develop how did you, how'd that develop in your whoa 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 don't turn around the commissars in town <laughs> whoa Suddenly, suddenly now, I'm I'm political. You see, the moment you start to touch a vein, they say you're political. They say, oh, we've got an activist on our hands. What I say is, <laughs> okay. <laughs> you say that, okay, what does that I mean? I'm take the mask off. Coronavirus was bullshit. Okay. <laughs> I had, I've been criticized for my anti-lockdown songs. We had, the, we had, you know, we sang a song with Clapton, but it's, you gotta ask yourself, is it a free world if a song can be outlawed? Well, it hasn't been outlawed, though. That's the, it's a, the... Has it been outlawed? You can only sing it at night. <laughs> well, no, there's, no, there's no evidence of that. I've been criticized for my hits, and you should, you should go out of your way to find them. Hit, hit songs such as, go ahead and cough on me, Johnny. <laughs> go ahead and cough on me, Johnny. Go, is that a, there's is another one about that one. Is that a play on was, uh, one of your old songs? Am where I was using? that a hit, uh, Van? Uh, there's another one that's there, there's another one that says I should be able to shake hands with Ma. <laughs> <laughs> I should be able to shake hands with Ma. I should be able to shake hands with Ma. Why not shake hands with her? <laughs> sure, I don't have a problem with that. <laughs> I'm pointing the finger at me. Uh, so where are you right now? Are you in uh, are you in your castle, your compound in Ireland? Is that where I'm you're in a compound? Up? I'm in a compound. Recently, since Brexit, there's a new border here. 
Uh-huh. You better believe it. I was in favor of Brexit. Why? Because you can't put a mask on a country. <laughs> <laughs> can't put a mask on a country. I understand. You know, they all, you know, ironically, I'm in a tough spot here because I've been censored for being uh, anti-mask. But the obvious logical step would be to do a magazine spread where you've got like a, an American flag over your mouth. Even if you're not an American, you uh-huh. get American flag tape over your mouth to show the world you've been censored. <laughs> But ironically, if I did that, it would just be more masks. Yeah. So I, I, I've had to turn down. I've had to turn it down. It's the greatest protest against censorship. It's the only thing publicists know how to do. I suppose if somebody not- censored is put, put American flag tape <laughs> over their mouth, even if they're from Ireland, have nothing to do with it. Yeah. Uh, I suppose you weren't a big Halloween guy when you were uh, growing up with the with the masks and everything. I uh, know. No. Look, trick or treat. Or be free. <laughs> you don't seem like the fun, most fun guy. <laughs> what, what's wrong with you? Well, you said I don't sound fun. I, yeah, you just Every, seem like such a grump. No offense. I see, I, see, I see six people on the Zoom screen. Yeah. All eight of your mothers have bounced around to a Vaniel Morrison hit. <laughs> Probably, yeah. You think I'm no fun? I'm the grand. I'm the. I'm the grandfather of your dreams. <laughs> okay. <laughs> but right Jesus now you've got a sweet as hydroxychloroquine, honey. <laughs> oh, so are you changing your old songs to match this? Uh, this this sort of obsession. We've got to with- rise to the occasion. We've got to rise to the occasion. They're building walls. <laughs> We've got to tear these walls down, just like we did with Hadrian. <laughs> That was close enough. Close what? enough. <laughs> Hadrian's Wall, tear it down. Hadrian's Wall. Is that a is that a number a, a deep cut off your album? <laughs> it's a deep cut, but when you turn it on, it's just me wailing and dropping a drum. Kaflunk, <laughs> 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 kaflunk, and I play the drum too. Okay, <laughs> that's not a drum. Are you okay? Let me ask you something. Can I ask you something, Van? Because I am actually, I'm, I mean, Astral Weeks, I mean, I'm a huge fan of the Moondance album, except for if the titles. If I venture, yeah, yeah, if I venture the into the strip stream. stream yeah. It's by the viaducts and the viaducts in the old eye. <laughs> yeah. I in actually, another place. I love that record. But are you, let me, ask you, let me ask you a question. Put that down, please. Put the tin whistle down. <laughs> let me ask you something. Straight, straight up. Now, this is a straight question. Are you okay? Did something happen to you? Recently, it feels like there's something like mentally off with you. I severely injured myself, but luckily it was. It's I severely injured my neck, but so but luckily it's where I would always wear a, a, an ascot anyway. A scarf or something, yeah. What what happened? Uh, you you said you've been injured. What the hell happened? I was injured. I was injured. I I, I they forced us into lockdown, and so those of us who were <laughs> music men. We had to flee for the hills, or in our, my case, a five-building compound. <laughs> yes. And so there was a moment where there was a lot of pianos that had to be hoisted. To my... <laughs> a moment where a lot of pianos had to be hoisted. Many pianos, when like... the music, when the music had to flee for the hills. <laughs> <laughs> All right, so enough, enough, enough. We don't need. And Timothy, there was workmen. There was workmen. There was workmen paying a good, high, libertarian, no health care wage. But the wage was high. Yeah, fair enough. We were hoisting, we were hoisting pianos into all five <laughs> buildings of the compound. <laughs> they and had to I get was, up to the upper floors. Without, they couldn't get through the doors or something? Is that what happened? I was playing, well, it's, you know, it's the European style piano home where to get the piano in, you kind of got to hoist it up. And you got to have, look, <laughs> there's two people with the hoist. There's somebody trying to guide it in. And there's somebody down below going, hey, 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 to the left. And then you've got to have, you've got to have a whistleman. Yeah. <laughs> I, was, I was playing whistleman and I slid, let's slip with one of those controversial tunes. Yeah. A, a slip of the old slide. <laughs> a slip of the old slide. <laughs> and I started losing pianos. Oh, no. The boys, the workmen, they were crying so hard. They started to lose pianos one by one. Oh, Jesus. <laughs> I was running around my compound. 
and they were falling and falling. I got, I probably got bonked on by five, six, oh seven, God. eight pianos. You, a piano landed on your head? Not just one piano I'm talking about. I'm talking about a whole, a whole storm of pianos. I'm talking about, imagine pianos falling from the sky. <laughs> Yeah. <laughs> Have you ever seen, if you ever seen the Mickey Mouse cartoon where there's a tornado that interrupts the band? Uh -huh. It was a lot like that, except I was causing people to lot drop pianos from my play. Jesus. That's, t I mean, it's amazing you survived, but that must have done some damage to your, to your, uh, your mental acuity, I would think. Or some, I don't know, it must How have had some effect. Neck? How did it hurt your neck? Is the... Well, uh, I, you'll, you'll notice uh, <laughs> severely, I... I it's just now uh, the doctor ordered ascot that I've got to wear. <laughs> doctor, that's a, that's a medicinal ascot. Uh -huh. And the, the sunglasses are covering up the fact that I have severe lesions all around the eye sockets. Oh, Jesus. Uh, well, you, you and see. And of course, uh, half my skull was sheared off. So I have to fight him. <laughs> Luckily, the vocal cords just bounced right back. And this yeah. is my greatest therapy. <laughs> yeah, so well, it seems like also the thing that got you in the trouble game. in the first place. I mean. Maybe if you weren't whistling away on your tin whistle there, you it wouldn't have distracted the workers. I don't know. You, an artist has to work with what he has, Timothy. I don't know. Have you ever tried it? Or you've been handed everything in a golden a, a golden chalice. <laughs> yeah. Never had to work for it. No, I've worked. Never had to work for it. No, Bounced I've around. I've worked. Isn't it time, isn't it time, Tim, that you look at yourself in the mirror and say, maybe this ma masking nonsense has gone too far? Maybe it's time we had an end to it? Well, it, we are sort of demasking. I mean, uh, we are, uh, you know... The regulations are loosening, and I was, I've been out and about with, I'm not. You're a truth teller. Watch out, <laughs> Timothy. They, they will start to crack down on you. Well, no. You're a truth teller. They will start to come after you, like they do for me. They. They. Watch out for they. Who's, oh, yeah, who's they, Van? You did this song uh, called They Control the Media. Do we have that one up? Timothy, did you Timothy, see this? this you're, is, you're I gotta asking, call you out on this. Uh, you're, asking, you're, asking, you're asking questions, and let me ask you this. You really wanna go down a they hole? Yeah, well. I mean, there's, <laughs> answers, there's answers. When you start asking who they is, yeah. then you start Then you start going, well, 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 damn me luck, who's them? That's well, then when you start, when, well, you, them, call, when yeah. you cross from well, them. Them is your band from the 60s. You were in a band called Them. Is that what you're talking about? <laughs> I'm, trying, I'm trying to stitch it together That's for you. That's what you're supposed yeah. to be. Yeah. Yeah. So, I was band. warning people. I've been warning people. Do you understand the connotations when you say they control the media, that, that the popular <laughs> perception of that is that that's Jewish people and that's very <laughs> offensive? Look at you. Look at you. Going straight for it. You look at with your anti semitic <laughs> With your anti-Semitic, with the typical adult swim, no. white skin, that's what you're doing. No, but are you, when you're saying they, well, are you actually trying to say them, the band them controls the media? <laughs> them does not control the media, but they controls the media. Them, <laughs> them is the key to understanding they, I've been screaming it. I've been screaming <laughs> well, it. You're... Do I have to spell it out for you? G-L-O-R-A-I-A. <laughs> <laughs> Yes, Gloria. I mean, okay, take, so what you're saying is you Gloria controls leap. the media? You gotta the take a leap. You gotta take a leap across the pond. All right, I'm you done with cross, you, Van. You gotta take a, a leap of faith across the fourth of fifth. All right, well, <laughs> you know what? You're a legend and you're very if strange. Venture, What's that? You do the slips tree and a bite up. Yeah. Side. Yes, you're 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 a you're a true legend. You seem to have, have some mental issues with the pianos and everything. I'm going to say that that's what's going on. I think it was the pianos. The hard part was the anvils that I had weighing down the piano. <laughs> Wait, you, you had an, you had anvils up there as well. To steady them, to steady them, Timothy. I had anvils just to steady the pianos. Uh -huh. They all came raining down. <laughs> oh boy. Well, that explains a lot. All right, well, thank you, Van, uh, Vaniel Morrison, for calling in. And I don't recommend your new album, I have to say. I give it one star. It's terrible You're, music. It doesn't need your stars. Yeah. It doesn't need your stars. It's yeah. blessed. It's blessed by the dew of the morning. Okay, good news. Good news it, for it's you. It's blessed then. by the dew of the morning, and that means that I kind of I, I take a 
I take a walk around my albums and I just kind of piss on them. Yeah. <laughs> All right. Thank you, Vaniel. Can I Goodbye. plug something? Can I plug something? Can I plug something uh, since I've been a hostile interview? I, I suppose so. <laughs> if it's your new album, I'm not exactly. No, it's not the new album. It. I'm not plugging the album. That's I wouldn't plug something. It's been out. The controversy's there. I sold as much as I'm selling. Okay. What I'd like to plug, Timothy, is I'm going to be on The Masked Singer on ABC. Mm. <laughs> you son of a bitch. Oh, that's, first of all, A, you shouldn't be revealing that because that's a spoiler. Hot girl. <laughs> She's a Do what? you remember, Sam? <laughs> Will you sing? Thank you, Van. You weirdo. That's me. That's me on the mass singer. That's me. Don't tell anyone. Oh, jeez. Well, we're never gonna get in trouble for that. All right, get him out of here. Get booted. Jesus, sweet as hydroxychloroquine, honey. Yes, we know. All right, thank you. Get him out of here. Get him out. Tim, you know, he has a problem with wearing a mask, but he doesn't have a problem with an ascot. Why doesn't he make a, like a mascot? Like, a mascot? That's fun. You know, All right. Combo mask ascot. He's done. Get him out. <laughs> it's only cut, a few inches down from the ties a mask. to the Why compound. He... <laughs> oh, boy. What a show, ladies and gentlemen. What a show. <laughs> How about that? The legend of Van, Van Morrison. Yes, we see you there. Camper Van Morrison. That could be Camper Van Morrison. Camper Van Morrison. Remember Camper Van Beethoven? Yeah, yeah well, that's what I'm going to yeah, yeah. Let's talk to just a good old-fashioned Zoomer, Matt. Let's see what Shelby has to say. Looks like two people named Shelby. Hello, Shelby. Van Morrison. <laughs> He's really hey, himself a big deep hole. Hey, how y'all doing? Doing pretty good. All right, then. Yeah. So I did just want to say, uh, Abby Martin, huge fan. Yeah. Uh, you, Mike Preisner's work is awesome. Uh, as well as your brother, Robbie. I love yeah. Media Rich Radio. Yeah, very cool. Um, but I wanted to see if I could get an update about, like, the whole Georgia thing. Oh, the lawsuit? We fucking won, baby. Nice. We won. Nice. We just got the verdict yesterday. And <laughs> yeah. What was this? Because I didn't, I couldn't read that. Whenever, you put, post, whenever anyone posts some kind of legal ruling and it's like ninety paragraphs, I'm like, is it good or is it good news or bad news? Right. Therefore, upon this, uh, there shall be there stated. What's the? Give me the nut. Okay. Here's here's the nuts and bolts of it. Uh, Thirty or so states in the U.S. require loyalty pledges to Israel in order to work. What? <laughs> for a to state work for the state, like yeah. a state uh, yeah. position. Like yeah. I, I'm the uh, auditor of the uh, state of Tennessee. Or if you're like a substitute teacher, if you're an independent contractor oh, working for a state institution. So I remember during Hurricane Harvey, contractors that were supposed to rebuild had to sign this fealty pledge to Israel in order to get money. Um, and so I got such a contract. I was supposed to give a keynote speech at the University of Georgia, and I was pretty shocked to see that the a clause in the contract said that you can never boycott Israel if you want to <laughs> take this money. I mean, just imagine how ridiculous it would be if you got a contract that said you this can sounds, never... This smells a little like can, like cancel culture <laughs> exactly. to me. Imagine if you got a, a uh, Imagine if you got a contract that said you could never protest Russia, right? Right. If you want to work in a state in the U.S. And then you had Putin taking to Twitter, which is what Netanyahu did, and actually bragged right. about how they passed all these laws in the U.S. and worked really hard to do this. It would be completely beyond the realm of possibility, you know. So it, it was so shocking. So I, I said, you know what? I'm going to sue Georgia. Right. I'm going to sue Georgia. And I did. And so did you say, like, I'm not going to sign this? Yes, I said, I'm not going to sign this. This is absurd. My whole film advocates this. I've done this advocacy for the last 10 years of my life. And so the whole conference fell apart. They canceled it. And then I just felt really disempowered. I was like, well, what the hell is going on? This is crazy. And then I just said, you know, I'm going to sue Georgia. And I did. And um, a year and a half went by where they were sitting on this. Israeli consulate officials came and tried to advocate the Georgia state legislature to change the law. And you had Netanyahu basically threatening. He was like, whoever boycotts us will be boycotted, threatening like economic consequences to American citizens. It was very surreal. Right. And then fast forward till yesterday after. And I don't think it's a coincidence, the timing. I really do think this represents a larger a shift, shift in public consciousness. And the judge said, you know what? I, I don't know. I'm I'm speculating, but the ruling came down yesterday where he said this is unconstitutional because it is. Sure. 
boycotts are constitutionally protected free speech. This is this has been back during the Montgomery bus boycotts. This mm-hmm. is what brought down Jim Crow. This is a this is a free speech issue. And you hear so much shit about cancel culture with people like Ben Shapiro and Milo Yiannopoulos. And they just start talking about getting heckled on college campuses yeah. like that. That's what they are all in hysterics about. It's crazy. No one talks about that. This is this is the epitome of cancel culture. A law it's black and white. The, the black hand of the government coming down and actually enacting laws that prevent you from talking about a certain issue. That is Speaking cancel culture. <laughs> so what do you get out of that? I mean, you know, you, is it a financial settlement? No. So we tried to sue for damages, but there's something um, called, God, what the fuck is it called? Something immunity that they just said <clears throat> these people couldn't have known that da, da, da. basically I can't sue for damages, which is fine. It was never yeah, about, right. it was never about money. Um, but, but it sets a precedent. It sets a precedent. And now it could go to the Supreme court if the Georgia state legislature tries to appeal it, Fascinating. which will be really interesting, but it's just so crazy that so many states have done this and no one really knows or talks about this that pro palestine speech is a, really I the most prediction. heavily I have criminalized a prediction. <laughs> yeah. you're going to well, be getting a call from somebody like uh, Brad Pitt or Angelina Jolie they're going to make a movie out of this <laughs> <laughs> there's going to be an Abby Martin uh, I don't know who's it going to be Doug Matt Vic who's going to play Abby in the movie um, Kristen Stewart there you go yeah. I have a feeling no one's going to talk about it. <laughs> <laughs> that could be too. All right. Well, Which thanks for sad. calling in, Thank guys. Thank you. I appreciate you guys. Congratulations. And what are you uh, touching my face? You Mike way. about the baby too. Thank you so much. What are you What are you making there? What's the needle point that you're working on? Oh, I'm actually. I wow. called in a couple of weeks ago doing um, embroidery. So this is Matt. Oh, oh my god. god. Oh, it's Matt. I thought That's it was a- Ruth Bader <laughs> Ginsburg. <laughs> 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 I was like, oh. Yeah, <laughs> A little uh, late to the RBG fandom. Similarity. Wait, is that Matt? Can I see it again? It's <laughs> pretty incredible. Yeah. I have, I, you know, it's I boycott this. Badass. I'm going to BDS this <laughs> situation. <laughs> Stop funding You'll have these creeps. Him, I promise. Oh, incredible. I be, I, mine was first. Wow. Hmm. Oh, wow. you're next, Vic. Uh, there's, yeah. some, uh, there's some change of the changing of the, the badass. You know, the as, as the changing uh, perceptions of the Palestinian <laughs> situation, so are the Office Hours audience. Warming to Matt, finally. Some... <laughs> I've always considered this area contested. This is my area. And yeah. I don't want any of you guys in my area. Matt, is there a hothead hotliner we should talk to? or I, You know, I think it got disconnected. Are we, or is it back up yet, guys? It sounds like no. Not yet. No. Okay, that's fine. Am I feel I? like the, pl- the the big problem with the uh, hothead hotline la- is it seems to be the, where the folks trying out bits. <clears throat> yeah. That's the bit land. Let them try a bit. <laughs> and... There, is you, the number you know, out there, Tim? It is always out there. It I just is. Think. We did. I it somehow got disconnected today, but we'll we'll see if we can. How get about back Sean up. Solomon? What's he One, up to, two, Sean? Three. Sean, where are you? Going to talk to Sean Solomon? Oh, um, he's our intern. Oh, yeah. I'm sorry, I'm I forgot. Not, <laughs> <laughs> I knew you looked familiar. <laughs> How's all the interning going? You have a topic? Every, uh, everything getting collated? Okay. Oh yeah, uh, had a bit of a you know, a little bit what? of an issue yesterday, but should be good now, right, Matt? Good <laughs> we have no <laughs> issues. Everything is wonderful. Right, sure. sure. All right. Okay. Yeah, well, keep doing good. the good work. Keep keep up the good work. And uh, oh, yeah. how's <laughs> Philly? Are you you're in Philly, right? Oh yeah, Philly's uh it's terrible. I think it's like ninety or something right now. But, and I have no AC, but I'll, I'll be fine. Okay. Well, that's hot. Keep it hydrated. There you go. Yeah. Um, <laughs> new rule though for interns: no drinking uh, on camera. That's bad luck. <laughs> Does that not look professional. <laughs> uh, who else do we have, Matt? Who do you want to provide? Uh, definitely Jonah. New rule. Love this song. Hello. Hello. <laughs> I feel like I should look I at have, my list uh, of what I want to talk about today. For a second. Hi. Um, I have a question for anybody that's willing to answer. It's just a, it's a, an attempt at a fun question, but maybe you won't think it's fun and you'll make fun of me. Um, so if you could pick... Uh, a song on the way to a heist, during a heist, and after a heist. What would your three songs be? So and I can give you mine to set it on, if you'd like. On your way to a heist. On your way, it's, it's non-diegetic too, so uh, it's just happening. It's not like you have to worry about headphones or playing in a car stereo or something like that. This is what I would play right after the heist, be- uh, right after I got out successfully. This is what I'd play. Okay. <laughs> 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 I 
I hope you don't get caught. Woo, <laughs> <laughs> woo, <Yeah>. uh-oh. <laughs> <laughs> and here's what I, I like play. Him. Here's what I played it before the heist. Squeak, squirt. <laughs> what about during? Let me get back to it. I don't have a okay. bed for that. <laughs> <laughs> Else? Right, what do you got? I got one. Doug, go I, ahead, Doug. Oh, go ahead. Okay, on the way there, um, probably this. Let's get it started. <laughs> <in here. laughs> no, let's get it started in here. Copy. Uh, and that's as far as I got. Wait, no, then during the heist. Probably some spin doctors. Uh, if you yeah. want to buy me flowers. Uh, probably two princes on the way out. Two yeah. princes on the way out. Because more of them. Give it, give it, give it. But if it is. During the heist, probably just crank some fish just to confuse them and make them feel kind of at ease, like the people I'm robbing. All right. So yeah. you obviously have your idea. What is your idea? I do, uh, and thank you for asking. It is um, Eleventh <laughs> Commandment by Chuck Mangione on the way there. Like we it know is, what that is. Yeah, right. Is well, that the one? Is that, that the song we play all the time? Sing it. You guys play Chuck. No, you guys play Feels So Good all the time. It's off the same album. It's the closer off that album. No, we play this like the fast jazz track. Yeah. This is a different. I don't know I the titles one. of these songs, bro. This is. Is it this one? This one. <laughs> <laughs> no, I don't, no, it's not that one. This it's one? not that vibe. Just All right, what's the second one? What's the second one? Well, now, I, I'll just give you my third one. It's Rapid Roy by Jim Koshy. My second one, you'd probably say the same thing. We don't know that one because it's so obscure. Um, but Jim Koshy, Rapid Roy, you know that one? <laughs> Who? Jim Koshy. <laughs> Jim Koshy, Rapid Roy. I might have fun not working well. I'm losing my mind, man. I really am losing it. I don't know what's going on. This is mine after a, after. A... You don't like Jim Croce? Jonah has a Croce agenda here today. <laughs> Two Croce's. Croce has. What, is he the one that died in a uh, car accident? <laughs> yeah, that's, there that's, you that's go. Another plane. It's one of the many plane the plane guy deaths. Plane guy deaths. Plane he died. Die deaths. Does he have the yeah. big mes- mustache? Yeah. 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 He does. Time in a bottle, and I've got the name of the other big hits from him. Jim Croce. Okay. On yep. my on my way there, I'll play this. <laughs> <laughs> And then during the uh, <laughs> d- during the heist, yeah. <laughs> David Lynch playing somewhere over the rainbow uh-huh. on the trumpet. Okay. And then afterwards, probably the the Wendy's hamburger uh, training rap video. Now working the grill, Bill. It ain't so tough. First of all, you got to check your stuff. Life okay. is real. That's it. Two five zero with the meat and cheese. Right, interesting that's conversation. Controversy does create conversation. We've proven that. Over and over again. Thank you for your call. Uh, do we have uh, we some more music talk? More music talk. Yes, we have record a record game. S- uh, special guest. Uh, uh, where is he? Robert. Robert, are you there? Robert. <laughs> Robert Beatty. How you doing, man? You all right? You're doing all right. Hey. How's hey, man. How are you? I've never fucking seen <clears throat> you. Have I? Yeah, we. I've only we, uh, spoken on the phone. Talked on the phone and have emailed, but never. Yeah, this is the okay, guy that perfect. made the record cover for my latest record, Moby. Uh, Fear of Death. You've never seen his face before? I've never seen him. What? No. Wow. Oh, fucking hell. <laughs> Look at that. Suddenly he's in saucer full of secrets. <laughs> <laughs> right there. There you go. Perfect. You know, that's almost yeah, like that that's look cool. that you saw in that those beat club videos. You know, those beat, those that German. Uh, yeah, 70, I love those. Those videos are great. Uh, are you but those sons of bitches, they are so, their copyright guy is like just all over. If you play a second of any of those performances, they they clamp down hard. Is, uh, are you do yeah, you have an actual that? analog well, like cool. video the controller g- there, or like a video toaster? What do you have? Whoa! What? Whoa. Yeah, what? What, do you, what is it? It's a Panasonic WJMX50. The classic. Yeah. <laughs> That's awesome. Well, I work, I That's actually song. pretty cool. Yeah, that, that is cool. You, so, how yeah, many cameras you got set up? Just two right now, but they're like these little security cam. Oh, that's crazy. Things. I have, well, I don't, I use a really old computer and I don't own a webcam. So like when everybody wanted to start 
having Zoom meetings, I was like, maybe I can cobble together some of this weird junk that I have. And what, so kind, you, what do you mean when you say an you old computer? What are you I'm talking looking at it right now? I got a, I don't know, it's like a Windows PC that runs Windows Seven still. <laughs> Wait, do, is that where you do all your art? Does that where you do all your yeah. art? Really? I just don't like buying things. So. No, well, you're good. I love buying things. I'm always buying doohickeys <laughs> I mean, I, and gadgets. I like buying things, but not, you know. <laughs> doohickeys and gadgets. It works. <laughs> I got this thing that was supposed, because I, I have some recurring back issues, and somebody told me to get these uh, TENS. They're these, like, patches you put on, and they have electrical impulses. That works? No, of course not. <laughs> Nothing works. Nothing works. So, Robert, we want to play... <laughs> the, the game that Doug invented Whoa. that's really changed the game. Uh, it is, let's see your record collection. Let's see what you got yeah. behind you. Well, no, it's it's more of like okay. you have to blindly <laughs> yes. pick a record. Blindly we'll pick tell a you record. where to, where Thank to you. place your hand. You close your eyes. <laughs> I love this dual camera thing. It's so <laughs> cool. Yeah, it's yeah we got the, we got the two camera. I'm going to do it. This, we're going to do this different. I've figured out a way that we can use the... So you tell me where to put the... <laughs> oh, yeah, that's oh, amazing. <laughs> What? Oh. This is insane! Okay, keep moving. Yes. And stop! <laughs> okay, now let me go over and see. That's incredible. Yeah, how are you going to see where yeah. that, that relates to? You get the general idea. It's like, yeah, that's about right. Exactly. Uh, bullseye, boo. Yeah. Bullseye, dude. Bullseye, dude. <laughs> I love this game. <laughs> All right. You could be quicker with this part of it, though. Oh, whoa. Trippy shit, man. What record is that? Oh, I know that record. That is, oh man, I know that record. What is 10 that? Point... One O Tricks Point. One O Tricks Point Never. never. Yeah. I don't know. Is it good? good. Yeah, it's good stuff. Whoa! Wow. Hey, wait a minute. That Whoa. looks like your work. Is that? Did you rip that off? No. Did you draw it? Did you do is that? Is that your artwork? cover? Is that your work? Did you do all the artwork? Cover? Let's play it again. All right. Let's Go see again. what else you have up there. <laughs> Nick, are you doing that sound? No, he's doing, he's it. doing it. How is he doing? This guy's the best. And stop. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, that's it. Bullseye, yep. buddy. Bullseye. Oh no! Fear of death. Let me guess. Oh! What the heck? What? We got in the lower racks. The top <laughs> racks. Are crazy. Yeah, yeah. These are. Doesn't stuff. make any sense. That's beautiful. Look at that beautiful I cover. Iconic. Tim, I know how to pick them. Okay, let's try another one. I like this guy only has his, the records he's worked on. <laughs> he's like, I don't really like music. This is a delay, so I have to... Now! <laughs> <laughs> it's a delay. It stops like two seconds later. Uh, uh, right about... It's a big-ass... What is that, a box that set? Box yeah, set? right there. Is that it's Eric Clapton Crossroads? <laughs> it's another one out tricks point ever. What? Oh... That's a weird one. That's like a, that's like a, it looks like that cover of that new um, Arthur Russell album. I would dream a little bit, but yeah. Okay. Yeah. So the, these are all records. This is like the record shelf in my studio. All you so have these is are all the, tricks and Tim records. Is that it? <laughs> well, these are just all the records that I've done the ar album artwork for. Okay. Without so. the game, show us your, f your favorite album cover that you've done besides mine. Oh man. And it doesn't really matter. Just show us a cool one. We're, we're not going to do a lie detector test. <laughs> I hate, as a guy that gets interviewed, he's got there's nothing worse. Yeah. What's your favorite blah, blah, blah? I don't fucking know. I bet he's got, I yeah. bet he's got a lie matter? detector polygraph test, like, rigged up on his own <laughs> PC, right, you know, cool. somehow. This is a different, this is my, for my friend Steve Halshill. So it's like a little bit, here, I'll come so you can hear me. But this one's like a little bit different. That's cool. Vibe. Oh, that's cool, man. Kind of weird little, like... Each of those could have been a cover on their own. Yeah. yeah, that was kind of the idea. And I did a bunch of videos, like, based on some of these things, like animated versions of those and stuff, so... Wow. Cool, man. Wow. Yeah. What's up with you? Are you working on... Uh, are you in the middle of something right now? Yeah, always. It's weird now, though, because, like, a lot of the albums that I'm working on, like aren't going to come out for like a year and a half. I know that the lead time is, I don't think people understand the lead time that vinyl has to go through these days. It's really incredibly it's, annoying. Yeah. And I mean, and you got <laughs> really like lucky because 
it kind of started like right when the pandemic i think we you know your record was like done like right kind of a couple months in so yeah i was just like think about this there's probably millions of examples of this but like the Beatles record the White Album. Now that didn't require a lot of work on the album cover, but um, <laughs> <laughs> they record that summer of '68. That it actually eight. probably did that cover. I don't know. Well, I'm just saying, forget the cover, <laughs> just the plot. production of the vinyl. They record that in in uh, like the summer of '68. It's out by November '68. Like it's out a month or two later in the stores. Yeah. What about well, the summer of '69? That's like, what the like. Talk about summer. I like. progress versus uh, uh, going backwards. It's like get my first real six string. Well, they, everything's just like gotten so bottlenecked, and like there's just so few pressing plants and stuff. But yeah, so I'm working on a bunch of stuff, but it's like, you know, it It'll never it probably won't. won't even be announced until like November or something. So I can't really like can't let the cat out of the bag with all the stuff I'm doing now, but well, the, it would the, be, you'd just, be breaking all new, kinds of agreements. If you, uh, yeah, if you reveal that all the, I, all the BDS contracts that these bands make me sign. <laughs> 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 yeah. You're going to get banned now that you've been on the show with Abby Martin. You're going to, you're, you're yeah. going to be, uh, you can't, you will be blacklisted. I did just, the new M do Mokhtar album came out on Matador, uh, last Friday, which I did the artwork for. That's the second one I've done for them. I MG Mokhtar. That's, I sent you guys that. Uh, yeah, from it's like hot he's a guitar Mokhtar. player from Niger. Oh yeah, that shit's really. That's the uh, Matt Sweeney. Yeah, produced, and one of the. Right? Yeah, and one of the other. Well, I don't know if Sweeney produced that one. Maybe he did, but one of the guys is on that. Will Oldham, the right. new Super Wolves, plays guitars like on that. Hall of Death. Uh, that fe- yeah. yeah. Hall of Death, which was ripped off of my fear of death. But that's okay. Yeah. I mean, listen, we're all inspired by different things. <laughs> um, well, Robert, I'm glad to see you and uh, appreciate your contribution. You know, I think the the cover of my record really helped uh, people. It drew, drew people in as it as a yeah, good cover. Yeah, for sure. I, I mean, it's one of my favorites I've done. It was like, actually, I think in the after hours last week, you that guy asked about what yeah. it was like working on it and i like that you were honest that it was like it's not a really good story it's yeah. just like, we just made it just, yeah can i ask a question no i get i did think always... i said i did it like i did my idea that's there that you can see is like little little uh easter eggs from the songs on the cover yeah for sure that was yeah funny. and I, yeah i don't even we didn't really talk about it too much yeah but yeah i don't know it was a really fun one to do and it's just like haven't you know, not really like a ton of the other stuff I've done. So, is there physical draw? Is there physical uh, drawing involved, or is it all in the computer? I mean, it it is, but it's all computer. So it's like tablet. Like uh-huh. I draw with like a, you know, because it. How things. do you get oh, that? Wow. How do you get that texture <clears throat> uh, effect? It's just a, like a bunch of different processes mm-hmm. I've developed over the years. I mean, I've been. You know, I used to do a lot more like watercolor and drawing stuff and scanning it in and kind of just have figured out how to do it in the computer and get it to look the way I want. So, yeah, it's just like a, I don't know, it's 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 really simple. It's not super complicated or anything. Well, I'm just using to you. Like it basic, is. I would be. Yeah, I know. Stick I, figures I, over here. Saying that. <laughs> but I can't but yeah, even draw a smiley face. <laughs> <laughs> um, let's, let's uh, you know, oh, you try. know, oh, fuck. I, my friend Amy Mann, hmm, okay, I'll drop that. <laughs> uh, had this really cool comic, uh, not comic, but like a book to to like learn how to draw. That's by this woman, and I can't remember her name. But it it's it's like a her premise is like you use one of those black and white composition books, and the, her book is actually looks like one of those black and white composition books. Mm-hmm. And uh, they, you get this book, and it gives you all these like exercises, very simple things to do, like draw a monster with your eyes closed, and draw breakfast, and you know, like all these things. And it, and you, you kind of follow her thing, and it's supposed to really get, like loosen you up and ease. You. I'm gonna call my wife right now and find out yeah. what the hell is the name <laughs> of that person. Doug, you had a question. Yeah, I'm just curious. How do you get those analog cameras and mixer into like? How do you go into the computer with that? Well, that's. That's one as like positive aspect of using an ancient computer is it still has firewire. So <laughs> yeah, but the- I I can run a mini DV camera that has firewire output 
into my computer and then run any analog video signal like RCA into that. And there, there are things that you can do. You're, you're telling like a, me, you're telling me that mixer has firewire inputs. Doug, do you no, really want to go out on this note? I, I mean, <laughs> this is a the show's I, almost. Yeah, let, me have my, let me bring this. This is my turn to bring the show to a screeching halt. Right. No. <laughs> you should, but let me try I to take it even. I never get a shot. Let me try to take it even lower. Here. Okay, go ahead. How do yeah. you? Because everything you're doing is digitally, you know, is digital. How do you? Preserve that and save that. I'm always like afraid I'm going to lose everything I've ever made, which I've He's got I, a I've jazz drive it. that he bu- dumps over the <laughs> yeah, right, right. right. Just like Steady. tons and tons of external hard drives. And I, I, you know, try to send copies of stuff to the record labels or yeah. the bands too, just so they have it in case I ever lose anything. I don't know. It's, it's really strange. I mean, it'll be nice when I'm dead. Somebody won't have to deal with like yeah. cataloging. <laughs> All of my it'll be so nice when you're dead. I just yeah. <laughs> Vic's like yeah. Yeah. I just have some friends whose like parents were artists and they passed away and they have like an entire house full of art they have to deal with. You know, oh, like right. rooms full just have of a paintings hard and yeah. stuff. And it's just like yeah. No, I know because like I come from a like a family of hoarders. So like my I mean, you know I'm lucky to live in the digital world because like I have like countless like you know all my music and everything that I've ripped and everything and just uh I don't know. But I'm just afraid I'm going to lose everything. Order. Order. Yeah. As Is, you can see from the, like the piles of TVs behind me and stuff. Did yeah. anybody in the chat come up with the artist I was thinking of? Probably not, huh? Uh, what was, I, my wife is not answering what was my the, text. Uh, what was the, the clue again? <laughs> <laughs> what was it? What, I don't remember what you're talking about. Uh, it's, a, it's this artist who, oh, we'll find it and put it in the, uh, in the Patreon chat or something. Talk about an after, after hours. Um, are you are you gonna check? Are you gonna get out of here? Are you no, gonna I'm gonna in? stay. You're gonna stay. You're, yeah. you're, she loves it. Love it. Abby Martin sticking around for the after hours program. Namaste. Which begins <laughs> in a few minutes over at Patreon.com/slash/OfficeHours. I want to thank everybody here, Doug and uh, and Van Morrison for calling in. Of course, the great James Adomian. Let's <laughs> thank just you. Be honest. You're welcome. Uh, <laughs> Doug and Vaniel. I also want to make a huge. <laughs> Huge announcement, a huge announcement. Um, next week, we I am I'm getting on a plane on Sunday. I'm heading to Tuscany to move my body as an actor and my mind as an actor in film. This is all reported. This is not a breaking news. That's not why I'm saying it. The news is we are bringing in a major guest host in the studio and we discussed whether or not we were going to make this a surprise or we were going to reveal this it was decided by by a majority vote not a unanimous vote (laughs) (laughs) that we will announce who our guest host will be next week and we think the the week after as well find out (laughs) <laughs> by tuning into After Hours <laughs> any moment now over at patreon.com slash office hours live thank you Abby Martin always a, tre- a treat to have you and a pleasure to talk to you about all things serious and not so serious thank you so much for having me thank you to the wonderful community out there who cho- joins us every week it was so good to be back I had a lot of fun I'm going to treasure this morning for the rest of my days <laughs> which are hopefully short Thank you, everyone. <laughs> See you shortly. Do for listening. I write just for you. Okay. But others hearing this may okay. find. Things they would argue. Why? 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 Why?
But truth Ray? is truth, and if they then Ray? decide Ray? to live Ray? with lies, that's their concern, not be gracious, mine, my friend. Be grateful, 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 be